Kishand. The Kishand, slash Kish and slash Kishand, plur. Kishandan, is a medium-sized dog with a plush, two-layer coat of silver and black fur with a rough and a curled tail. It originated in Holland, and its closest relatives are the German Spitzes such as the Gross Spitz, Large Spitz, Middle Spitz, Medium Spitz, Klein Spitz, Miniature Spitz, Zwerg Spitz, Dwarf Spitz, or Pomeranian. The Kishand was previously known as the Dutch Barge Dog, as it was frequently seen on the barges traveling the canals and rivers of the Netherlands. The Kishand was the symbol of the Patriot faction in the Netherlands during political unrest in the years immediately preceding the French Revolution. In the late 19th century, the breed was developed in England from imports obtained in both the Netherlands and Germany. In 1930, the Kishand was first registered with the American Kennel Club. Description Appearance A member of the Spitz group of dogs, the Kishand in American Kennel Club, AKC, standard is 17 inches, 43 centimeters, to 18 inches, 46 centimeters, tall and 19.25 inches. 48.9 cm, plus or minus 2.4 inches, 6.1 cm, in the Federation Sinologica Internationale, FCI, standard and weighs 30 pounds, 14 kg, to 40 pounds, 18 kg. Sturdily built, they have a typical spitz appearance, neither coarse nor refined. They have a wedge-shaped head, a medium-length muzzle with a definite stop, small pointed ears, and an expressive face. The tail is tightly curled and, in profile, should be carried such that it is indistinguishable from the compact body of the dog. Coat Like all Spitz-type dogs, the Kishan has a dense double coat, with a thick ruff around the neck. Typically, the males of this breed will have a thicker, more pronounced ruff than the females. The body should be abundantly covered with long, straight, harsh hair standing well out from a thick, downy undercoat. The hair on the legs should be smooth and short except for a feathering on the front legs and trousers, as previously described, on the hind legs. The hair on the tail should be profuse, forming a rich plume. Dot head, including muzzle, skull, and ears, should be covered with smooth, soft, short hair, velvety in texture on the ears. Coat must not part down the back. Coat care requires line brushing on a fairly regular basis. The Kishan typically blows its undercoat once a year for males, twice a year for females. During this time, the loss of coat is excessive and their guard hairs will lie flat to their back. It usually takes two weeks for the blow to complete, in order for new undercoat to begin growing back in. A Kishan should never be shaved, as their undercoat provides a natural barrier against heat and cold. Keeping their coat in good condition will allow efficient insulation in both hot and cold weather. Color The color should be a mixture of gray and black and some white as well. The undercoat should be very pale gray or cream, not tawny. The hair of the outer coat is black tipped, the length of the black tips producing the characteristic shading of color. The color may vary from light to dark, but any pronounced deviation from the gray color is not permissible. The plume of the tail should be very light gray when curled on back and the tip of the tail should be black. Legs and feet should be cream. Ears should be very dark, almost black. Shoulder line markings, light gray, should be well defined. The color of the ruff and trousers is generally lighter than that of the body. Spectacles and shadings, as later described, are characteristic of the breed and must be present to some degree. There should be no pronounced white markings. According to the American Kennel Club breed standard, the legs and feet are to be cream, feet that are totally black or white are severe faults. Black markings more than halfway down the foreleg, except for penciling, are faulted. The other important marking is the spectacles, a delicate dark line running from the outer corner of each eye toward the lower corner of each ear which, coupled with markings forming short eyebrows, is necessary for the distinct expressive look of the breed. All markings should be clear, not muddled or broken. Dot absence of the spectacles is considered a serious fault. The eyes should be dark brown, almond-shaped with black eye rims. Ears should be small, dark, triangular, and erect. Temperament Kishundan tend to be very playful, with quick reflexes and strong jumping ability. They are thoughtful, eager to please and very quick learners, which means they are also quick to learn things their humans did not intend to teach them. However, Kishundan make excellent agility and obedience dogs. In fact, so amenable to proper training is this bright, sturdy dog that they have been successfully trained to serve as guide dogs for the blind, only their lack of size has prevented them from being more widely used in this role. 
They love children and are excellent family dogs, preferring to be close to their humans whenever possible. They generally get along with other dogs as well and will enjoy a good chase around the yard. Kishandan are very intuitive and empathetic and are often used as comfort dogs. Most notably, at least one Kishand, Tikva, was at Ground Zero following the September 11th attacks to help comfort the rescue workers. The breed has a tendency to become especially clingy towards their owners, more so than most other breeds. If their owner is out, or in another room behind a closed door, they may sit, waiting for their owner to reappear, even if there are other people nearby. Many have been referred to as their owner's shadow, or Velcro dogs. They are known by their loud, distinctive bark. Throughout the centuries, the Kishant has been very popular as a watchdog on barges on canals in the Netherlands and Middle Europe. This trait is evident to this day, and they are alert dogs that warn their owners of any new visitors. Although loud and alert, Kishandan are not aggressive towards visitors. They generally welcome visitors affectionately once their family has accepted them. Unfortunately, barking may become a problem if not properly handled. Kishandan that are kept in a yard, and not allowed to be with their humans, are unhappy and often become nuisance barkers. Training The Kishand is very bright in work and obedience. The Kishand ranks 16th in Stanley Korn's The Intelligence of Dogs, being of excellent working slash obedience intelligence. This intelligence makes a Kishand a good choice for the dog owner who is willing to help a dog learn the right lessons, but also entails added responsibility. While affectionate, Kishandan are not easy for the inexperienced trainer. Consistency and fairness are needed, and, while most dogs need a structured environment, it is especially necessary with a Kishand. Like most of the independent-minded Spitz breeds, Kishandan respond poorly to heavy-handed or forceful training methods. Many behavioral problems with Kishandan stem from these intelligent dogs inventing their own activities, often destructive ones, like digging and chewing, out of boredom. They need daily contact with their owners and lots of activity to remain happy. Kishandan do not live happily alone in a kennel or backyard. Kishandan can also be timid dogs. It is important to train them to respect, but not fear, their owners and family. Kishandan want to please, so harsh punishment is not necessary when the dog does not obey as quickly as desired. They like to spend time with their owners and love attention. Health Kishandan are generally a very healthy breed. Though congenital health issues are not common, the conditions which have been known to sometimes occur in Kishandan are hip dysplasia, luxating patellas, trick knee, epilepsy, Cushing's disease, diabetes, primary hyperparathyroidism, and hypothyroidism. Van Willebrand's disease has been known in Kishandan but is very rare. An accurate test for the gene causing primary hyperparathyroidism, or PHPT, has recently been developed at Cornell University. As with any breed, it is important when buying a puppy to make sure that both parents have been tested and certified free from inherited problems. Test results may be obtained from the breeder, and directly from the Orthopedic Foundation for Animals site. Kishans in a UK Kennel Club survey had a median lifespan of 12 years 2 months. One in four died of old age, at an average of 14 to 15 years. Grooming Because of their double coat, Kishandan need regular brushing, an hour a week will keep the dog comfortable and handsome. The Kishan's coat sheds dirt when dry, and the breed is not prone to doggy odor, so frequent bathing is unnecessary and undesirable. The coat acts as insulation and protects the dog from sunburn and insects, so shaving is not desirable, however some owners find it beneficial to clip their dog's coats in hotter weather. The coat also loses its distinct color as the black tipping on the hairs will be shorn off. If frequent brushing is too much effort, it is better to choose another breed rather than clip the Kishand short. History The Kishand was named after the 18th century Dutch patriot, Cornelis, Kees, de Gisela-er, spelled Gijelaar in modern Dutch, leader of the rebellion against the House of Orange. The dog became the rebel's symbol, and, when the House of Orange returned to power, this breed almost disappeared. The word Kishand is a compound word, Kees is a nickname for Cornelius, de Gisela-er, and Hond is the Dutch word for dog. In the Netherlands, Kishand is the term for German spitzes that encompass them all from the Toyar Dwarf, Pomeranian, to the Wolf Spitz, Kishand. The sole difference among the German spitzes is their coloring and size guidelines. There are debates over the origin of the breed, many English references point to the Kishand as we know it originating in the Netherlands. On the other hand, according to the FCI, the breed is cited as being part of the German Spitz family, originating in Germany along with the Pomeranian. 
Toyer Dwarf German Spitz, and American Eskimo Dog, smaller standard German Spitz. The first standard for Wolf Spitz was posted at the Dog Show of 1880 in Berlin. The club for German Spitzes was founded in 1899. The German standard was revised in 1901 to specify the characteristic color that we know today, silver gray tipped with black. In the late 19th century the overweight Pomeranian, a white German Spitz and most likely a standard German Spitz, was shown in the British Kennel Club. The overweight Pomeranian was no longer recognized by the British Kennel Club in 1915. In the 1920s, Baroness Van Hardenbroek took an interest in the breed and began to build it up again. The Nederlandsekeeshan Club was formed in 1924. The Dutch Barge Dog Club of England was formed in 1925 by Mrs. Wingfield Digby and accepted into the British Kennel Club in 1926, when the breed and the club were renamed to Kishand. Carl Hinderer is credited with bringing his Schloss Adelsberg Kennel, which he founded in 1922 in Germany, with him to America in 1923. His German champion Wolf Spitz followed him two by two in 1926. At that time, less than ten years after World War I, Germany was not regarded fondly in England and America, and the Wolf Spitz slash Gishan was not recognized by the AKC. Consequently, Karl had to register each puppy with his club in Germany. Despite this, Karl joined the Maryland KC and attended local shows. Karl regularly wrote to the AKC, including the New York headquarters, to promote the Wolf Spitz. While going through New York on his way to Germany in 1930, Karl visited the AKC offices and presented Wachter his Germany champion, to AKC president, Dr. Demond, who promptly agreed to start the recognition process, with some caveats including changing the name to Kishand, and asked Karl to bring back all the relevant data from Germany. Karl also translated the German standard to English for the AKC. The Kishand was accepted for AKC registration in 1930. Despite intense lobbying the FCI would not accept the Kishand as a separate breed since it viewed the Wolf Spitz and Kishand as identical. In 1997, the German Spitz Club updated its standards so that the typically smaller Kishan preferred in America and other English-speaking countries could be included. This greatly expanded the gene pool and unified the standard internationally for the first time. Now bred for many generations as a companion dog, the Kishan easily becomes a loving family member. As a result of the breed's history and friendly disposition, Kishanden are sometimes referred to as the Smiling Dutchman. Colored Kishanden Historically, Kishanden being part of the German Spitz family had been interbred with their smaller brethren, small, standard, and dwarf German Spitzes, and came in several colors, white, black, red, orange, orange shaded white, also called orange and cream, and silver gray. Originally, like the other German Spitzes, many colors, including piebalds, were allowed, but as time progressed, only the silver gray and cream, wolf gray, color was finally established into the wolf spitz type. While other colored Kishanden can have terrific conformation, they are not allowed to be shown in the show ring. Colored Kishanden are considered pet quality. The appearance of oddly colored keys and otherwise wolf gray litters has caused research into the early history of Kishan coat colors. Because of this, some breeders wonder whether the Kishan should be bred for colors other than gray. There are many bloodlines carrying the color gene, and rather than examples of mixed breeding, Colors are legitimate throwbacks to an earlier era of the breed. No one knows the exact number of colored Kishanden born in the United States. Incorrect or incomplete documentation makes it impossible to determine how many colored Kishanden, and of which colors, have been born in the United States. And of which colors, have been born in the United States. And of which colors, 